Good evening and good morning and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about the mass spring system equation. So we've done the mass pendulum equation before so we've looked at getting the one for time for mass pendulum and of course we had some assumptions in here however this one actually might need to be derived by the uh, is actually going to need to be derived in your exam potentially. Um, so there's not actually any assumptions with this one uh, but there's some really important things that you need to know. So this is a mass on a spring that I have extended down and it will start to oscillate around this point. Now it's really important that you realise that when I have a spring and I put a mass on it, it will stretch and it won't move. That there is your equilibrium point. This is the point that your spring, when you, pull it, when you add energy and put it down even further, it will oscillate around that equilibrium point. So this here is the amplitude of my oscillation, is how far from this equilibrium point I am. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can liken this to, of course, um, looking at the forces going involved with this and actually be able to uh, work out the equation for the time period. Now, at this point here, the forces, okay, the forces are balanced. Okay, so any extra force that is going to cause an acceleration upwards is due to the extension you, uh, you actually cause. And the extension is, of course, this um, amplitude here. So any force, oops. so any thing that you've caused, any extra extension force, the resultant force is going to be the extra extension you have caused. Now, I've said before that you can liken simple harmonic motion to circular motion. So, because it's an object that goes from one position back round to its initial position, it goes back round to its initial position. So, I'm going to equate this to the equation m omega squared r, which of course is the equation for the circular motion. Okay. Now, the radius of this circular motion in this setup here is actually the amplitude of this object, which is the extension that you caused it. So these two things are going to cancel out here, leaving me with this formula here. So I'm just going to extend it a little bit to get the time period out of this. So m 2 pi over t squared equals k. So that's 4 pi squared over t squared equals k over m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that m up here, I'm going to put, that, uh, put the t up there, because it's divided when times it. It's going to end up with m 4 pi squared um, equals k t squared. Move the k down, m, I'm going to do, just going to do that here. And then I'm going to square root the lot. So I'm going to end up the square root times by 2 pi equals t. In other words, what I'm going to end up with is t equals 2 pi root m over k. So what it's actually saying here is that the mass that you actually put on the spring actually is going to affect the oscillation. So if you put a 10 kilogram mass here on the same uh, and a 20 kilogram mass on it what it means is that if you stretch it back by the same amount the oscillation for each one would be different and this actually really this equation is really important because it means that we can actually measure the mass of objects without gravity involved so the way of course that we measure our mass is that we stand on some scales and the scales take into account that our weight the force that we're putting on them has gravity involved but when you're in places like a, va like, um, a zero G, for example, you can't use that kind of idea of forces, but you can use oscillation. So in space, you're able to find the mass of an object by oscillating it, calculating its time period, and therefore you can use this formula here to work out the mass. And that is a derivation for the mass spring system equation.